Hi again, students. Let's continue with our lecture on transcription initiation. I'd now like to discuss where transcription takes place. We now know that transcription takes place in specific or defined regions of the nucleus. It has long been known that RNA polymerase 1 transcribes ribosomal RNA in a region of the nucleus called the nucleolus. We have now discovered that RNA polymerase 2 is also localized to specific regions of the nucleus. And these regions are called transcription factories. A transcription factory is an area in which transcription is enriched. So if you remember what we discussed in week one of the course, we spoke about the formation of TADs or topology associated domains. And we spoke about how the movement of the topology associated domains are dynamic within the nucleus. Now we know that regions of DNA that are uncoiled can be localized to a unique location within the nucleus. And it's at this location that transcription can be enriched. These transcription factories have been shown to contain RNA polymerase II, as well as newly transcribed RNAs. In addition to this, genes with similar expression patterns have been shown to be located within these transcription factories. A group of techniques that are collectively referred to as chromatin conformation capture involved the use of DNA cross-linking agents in order to investigate DNA-DNA interactions. These studies have shown that looping of DNA can result in increased DNA transcription and that certain regions of DNA from two different chromosomes can also associate with each other and regulate gene expression. This brings us to the concept of the enhancer. An enhancer is also a cis-acting regulatory element. Enhancers are located at a distance from the genes that they regulate. They can be up to a million base pairs away. Enhancers can be placed in any orientation and they can still act to enhance the expression of the target genes. They can be located either upstream or downstream of the genes or the gene promoters that they regulate, and they may also be located within the intronic regions of the genes that can be later spliced out. Although these enhancers are located at a distance from the genes that they regulate, they still act to modulate the expression of these genes. And chromatin-chromatin interactions or DNA-DNA interactions have shown us how this may be possible. In addition, enhancers may also play a role in regulating the expression of not just one, but multiple different genes. Other regulatory elements include insulators and silencers. Insulators may act as boundary elements that can block enhancer function. For example, if an enhancer is located at a distance from the gene that it regulates, an insulator may form a large DNA loop between the enhancer and the promoter of the gene. And this prevents the enhancer from reaching or binding to the target promoter and prevents the enhancer from increasing the expression of that gene. Like enhancers, silencers are also cis-acting regulatory elements. These may also be located at a distance from the genes that they target. However, silencers act in an opposite manner to enhancers in that they are negative regulators of gene expression. This brings us to the concept of the mediator. Enhancers can recruit transcriptional activators or co-activator proteins that interact with a protein that is called the mediator. The mediator is a protein that can bind to RNA polymerase II or the RNA polymerase II holoenzyme. Enhancers in complex with activator or co-activator proteins can form the enhancer song which recruits the mediator 
and RNA pole 2. And this acts as a bridge that can direct RNA polymerase 2 to a specific gene promoter. Both enhancer and silencer elements are involved in increasing the concentration of regulatory proteins at gene promoters. This diagram shows how an enhancer can bind to activator or co-activator proteins, and silencers may function in a similar way. However, enhancers will recruit RNA polymerase 2 or the pre-initiation complex to their target gene and allow this target gene to promote the expression of that gene. Now, if we consider the situation, we can imagine a scenario where RNA polymerase 2 will initiate transcription and move off towards the right direction. The enhancerosome can then recruit another RNA polymerase holoenzyme that can allow for multiple rounds of expression of the gene. In this way, the enhancer can increase the expression of a particular gene. Here's an example of how the enhancerosome complex may act to promote gene expression. The enhancerosome complex contains both activators and coactivators that bind to the enhancer region and modulate or increase gene expression. In this example, the enhancerosome complex can recruit a histone acetyl transferase that is involved with reducing histone DNA contacts. A SWISNF complex is then recruited to the enhancerosome after histone acetyl transferase binding. The SWISNF complex then modifies nucleosomes upstream of the target gene. Displacement or sliding of the nucleosome at the enhancer site leads to exposure of the Tata box, and that can allow for basal transcription complex binding to the Tata box region and transcription initiation. LNC RNAs or long non-coding RNAs can also act as enhancers. In this example, a long non-coding RNA is transcribed at the enhancer region. Transcription of this long non-coding RNA results in the recruitment of chromatin-modifying enzymes. That's depicted by the C in the diagram. These chromatin-modifying enzymes can result in loosening the DNA at the enhancer region. Uncoiling of the DNA at the enhancer can lead to a loosened DNA structure, and this can form a looped structure of DNA. Since the DNA is now unpackaged at this looped structure, this region of the DNA is free to move around. Other chromatin modifiers or activator and co-activator proteins can then bind to the enhancer region and can target these chromatin modifying enzymes to the gene promoter, resulting in decondensation or unpackaging of the chromatin at the promoter region, which will then allow for RNA polymerase 2 to access the gene promoter and initiate transcription. So to summarize these concepts, let's look at an example of the human metallothionine gene. This diagram shows an example of the metallothionine gene and its cis-acting regulatory elements within its promoter. The metallothionine gene is expressed in response to heavy metal toxicity or oxidative stress. And this gene contains multiple cis-acting regulatory elements in its promoter. It contains enhancers and repressors of transcription. These elements here, ARE, MRE, BLE, are response elements to which transcription factors can bind to the promoter region of this gene. The metallothionine gene also has a glucocorticoid re receptor binding site called the GRE. The glucocorticoid receptor and MTF1 are usually located in the cytoplasm. However, during stress or in response to high levels of heavy metals, both glucocorticoid receptor as well as MTF1 can translocate to the nucleus. When either the glucocorticoid receptor or MTF1 enter the nucleus, 
they may then bind to the promoter region of the metallothionine gene. Once bound, they may recruit other factors or chromatin-modifying enzymes that result in exposure of the Tata box and expression of the gene. In addition to transcription factors that can bind to the promoter region of the metallothionine gene, the metallothionine gene also contains a binding site for a repressor called PZ120. PZ120 is able to bind to the transcription start site and prevent transcription of the gene. The initiator element, INR, is also located in the metallothionine gene. The initiator element is a sequence that overlaps with the transcription start site and has a consensus sequence of YYANWYY. Y stands for a pyrimidine thymenocytosine, which is then followed by A, and then an N, which stands for any nucleotide, followed by a W, which is either a T or an A, and then two more pyrimidines. From this diagram, we can conclude that the promoter region of a gene can contain multiple regulatory elements. These transcription factors may bind to the promoter in various combinations and recruit other components or chromatin-modifying enzymes in order to promote transcription of the gene. Here's an example of how transcription factors or cis-acting elements may promote transcription of a gene. So the glucocorticoid receptor element, GRE, is a short sequence element. A short sequence element means it's made of a few nucleotides. The GRE is located between two nucleosomes. So when the glucocorticoid receptor enters the nucleus, it can identify the region or its binding site because this region will not be occupied by nucleosomes. When the glucocorticoid receptor binds to the GRE, it displaces the nucleosome right next to it. When this nucleosome becomes displaced, other factors, and this factor may either be an initiator element or a, another cis-acting factor, can bind to the neighboring DNA regions. And once this activator element binds, other chromatin-modifying enzymes can be recruited to this region, which can result in decondensation of the DNA and chromosome and transcription initiation. So this summarizes the concept of transcription initiation. And in the next lecture, we will move on to elongation as well as mRNA processing. Thank you.